Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Oh fuck. Welcome back to Wish for Death Island once again, and today we're on the penultimate video of Batwoman. You heard it right, folks, we're almost at the end. In fact, we will be covering the end here, but boy, it'll feel like you've traveled for a century before you reach it. You ready? Are you sitting down? Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Episode 16 opens on Kate and Alice leaning against the car while Jacob finishes burying the body of the evil skin man. Alice is just prattling on as usual, this time about the skin man, while Kate is having a numb flashback, I guess. This is happening now. They're just hanging out with Alice and were stupid enough to get themselves into this situation when there were a billion other things that they could have done. She's talking about bullshit and even Jacob gets sick of the bullshit and he's like, Lock it off. Or your hands go back in the cuffs. But it just makes me wonder why they let her out of them in the first place. She's a murderer. You guys accidentally killing Skin Man because you're retarded does not measure up to Alice killing because she's evil. But no, this doesn't amount to anything because he never makes a move to actually capture her or anything and just lets her hang out against the car. He even hands her the shovel so that she can keep working, which is effectively handing her a weapon. And she has enough to make this a pity party about how worried she is for Mouse, who's just out and about doing his own thing. I don't know what he's doing exactly or how, but it's probably better off without you involved. Maybe he got himself a job at Taco Bell or something, good for him. She walks away and Jacob calls after her, and you guessed it, she has his gun and she's being all quirky about them letting her slink away. The music in the scene before was also overly sentimental as well. She also reminds them that the DNA of both of them are on the body, because they're morons. Why does no one wear gloves when they do anything? Kate looks up and sees the bat signal, so I guess she let Alice go. She has a habit of seeing something and is able to keep doing the thing that she's currently doing while investigating the first thing, but instead of that she just ditches what she's doing at the time and runs after the other thing and acting like there's no alternative to it. The episode proper opens up with a car and someone flying into it. It's the person she is roughing up because apparently she's getting more aggressive as the series goes on. Which doesn't make her any different because she wasn't a good person in the first place. How does you beating someone up make you look even worse when you have beat up so many people in the past for no reason? And they don't matter but this one does. I guess this guy killed Joel or something. He limps away because him being a man and her a skinny woman apparently doesn't mean anything with fighting and she has a blurry camera shake realization that she's being the big bad because she's losing her touch. Yo, shit your brains! What goddamn corner is- All of this crazy shit has happened in one season, in 16 episodes. She even takes off her mask out in the open in the middle of bumfuck nowhere and has a panic attack from being the big bad. But in saving my sister, I became more like her. You were always like her, you're just missing the blonde wig and the literary references, lesbian Draco Malfoy. She lies to Luke that she couldn't find Beth's murderer while Luke is all worried, and he talks about the upcoming court case for his dad's murderer. I honestly haven't been paying attention to this side of the drama because it's as if it doesn't exist until they need it to. It's just like, oh yeah, Luke dead, angry lol. Alice walks into her lair with some very natural dialogue. Mouse! Have you returned home? And she finds her entire crew slaughtered with bear traps. There's a note from some enemy who doesn't like her and has come for payback. I completely forgot who this was until I remembered the episode with the gun. The assassin dude was trying to steal the gun that could kill Batwoman and this was his boss. So I guess she is coming back for revenge even though at the time I thought that she wouldn't but even then it's so minor that you forget about it anyway. Even though Black Lightning was suspended for lying to Jacob, she's once again doing some jobs for him in secret. He's looking Looking for footage of Luke's dad's murderer, and Black Lightning ends the conversation with Consider me back on payroll. Even though that's his call, not hers. But he says nothing and awkwardly walks away because, man, I've had enough of this. Black Lightning then calls Kate. I find it weird that they never have any text history. It's like they erase their texts every time they speak, which wouldn't really help. They're not even saying anything important. Maybe they get drunk and text each other and then delete it all the time. Kate decides that she's going to mope around her bar instead, which is closed again because the customers aren't a thing that people need for their business. She's drinking from like 25 different glasses all around the bar, <laughs> and she walks around the place where the skin man died and has flashbacks to the last episode again. And then Alice shows up because of course she does. It's like she can just teleport everywhere. Does it not alarm you that she can get into your bar whenever she wants? She knows where you are at any time and she's going insane. 
and the fact that she can disguise herself as anyone, is that not something that you're worried about? She wants to find Mouse and she's angry that the crows are gonna find him first because she thinks that they'll kill him. They should, but we know that they would just try to capture him and fail because they all suck. That's all they've done all the times that Alice was kidnapped and she escaped every single time. She asks Kate for help to find Mouse and says that she'll leave Kate alone forever if Kate helps her with this and Kate actually believes this and says yes. So some quirky music plays and they're just a team now. Let's actually think about what this means. Alice is saying that she'll disappear with the mouse and Kate will never see her again, which means that she will continue to kill and hurt people everywhere else. Kate probably knows this and decided, yeah, let me think about this to help this person. Now, there's a ruse coming up with this which will make you think that things have changed, but once we get there, I'll explain my thought process and why they haven't changed that much. Kate finds out from Jacob that Mouse is attacking nurses outside of Arkham, and Alice says this is because the nurses are bad people. She basically spins it around to make it look like she and Mouse are the victim of all of these nurses because they're all evil and don't care about the patients at Arkham. So out of nowhere, we're now getting law that these characters we've never met have been bad with Alice and she needs to get revenge on them and we should support her because she's righteous about it and we have no further context for this. It then cuts to them standing outside the house that they're scoping out that Mouse might attack soon and it's as though they're doing a good cop bad cop routine, Alice is being quirky as if this is a comedy movie and the nurse is being warned that Mouse is coming while these guys pretend to be crow security. She doesn't ask for a badge number or anything, she just lets them inside and then they go through a series of uh, co comedy while well, Kate is just fine with this. Luke is in the courtroom waiting to hear the session and Asian puts a hand on his knee to comfort him. He says that he didn't notice her then, I don't know how he didn't when she's wearing yellow. Black Lightning goes to see who she's after only to see that the person is dead and she's getting sniped by someone but a blonde bitch, Alfred's daughter, kind of just... she she's there? And she pushes Black Lightning out of the way just in time. Uh, she, she's just... She's always snarky. There's no other type of attitude she has other than snarky, and it just reminds me how much I hate this character. She also got shot in the arm, and I, I, I don't know how at this angle, but I do we do we care? Also, this super cool sniper used a fucking laser. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kate and Alice are still being quirky, and for some reason, Kate let Alice keep the knife and wave it in front of her face. Mouse is just suddenly outside now, like he, he fucking teleported there, and he's hobbling towards the house like a coked out homeless guy, yelling the name of the nurse in the middle of the day. Nurse as soon as he gets onto their property, the police show up out of nowhere as well, and Kate and Alice have to duck. Everyone just knows how to teleport. That's the true secret of Batwoman. They all can fucking spawn where they want. Jacob knocks out the air next to Mouse's head, and I guess he was going to shoot him, but they just arrest him, and the old lady reveals that she was the one who called the real crows and has a gun on Kate and Alice. Shoot, old lady, for fuck's sake, shoot! But Kate pushes her gun up slowly and they bowl her over to leave out the back as the crows burst in. She was angry at them for lying and they technically did lie, but they also technically didn't because Mouse did turn up. But anyway, it just cuts to them back at the bar because they somehow escaped and they're in this together. So the crows were called because of these two inside the house as well as Mouse, and none of them think to check the back door? Interesting. <laughs> Meanwhile, the evil Arkham doctor fucking stabbed Mouse with a needle because that's how you do that. I guess Mouse is the victim here. Alice starts narrating the way the cell works and suddenly they're talking about breaking into Arkham to get Mouse, so she and him can leave Gotham. And then Alice is like, we're not so different, you and I. You to see that you and I are one in the same. Then Kate realizes that Alice had somehow planned this all along because she left Skin Man there for Kate to find and Kate attacks her for like 10 seconds before they both collapse and pant, so I guess that's the end of that. I guess for the plan to make sense, Alice found Mouse, then left the Skin Man to be interrogated, then she let herself be taken by Mouse to have the fear toxin inside her so that she knew that Jacob could find her and then she shows up at Kate's and helps them hide the body knowing that Kate would react this way and then she shows up and asks for help. It immediately cuts back to the court drama. The cop was bad and they get a retrial, which make Luke upset. They don't even mention the fact that the dude saved Jacob in prison again. Kate and Alice lie on the floor for a while and then Alice is like, skin dead, ruined my life, and repeats the same thing that she said before for like the third time this episode. And then Kate's like, I, I need to be able to trust you. How the fuck could you possibly do that? No one dies in the process. I, uh, uh, 
Hey, where did that mask come from? So the security outside the asylum sees a bus showing up, and there are only two cops there to check it, but they find a bomb underneath. They get the driver out because they think that he's responsible, and they point guns at him, but they're still standing right next to the bus where the bomb is. They're not even trying to clear out of the area. I guess that's an innocent man framed for something he didn't do. You're the hero, Kate. While this diversion is happening, Kate and Alice somehow sneak inside off camera so we don't get to see the interesting shit, and they put masks on and go in. The guards don't know how to use their own equipment again, which is perfect for them. They also don't know how to signal for an emergency or anything like that, so they let the girls beat the crap out of them, and these idiots take their mask off inside the asylum. What is the point of the masks? Luke is waiting in his car while the dude who is getting the retrial walks past him with his grandma. Luke confronts him. This scene, this scene is actually okay. How the hell did you know that? You kidding? Your pops wouldn't shut up about it. Tats, dreads, reckon? Of course I'm gonna convince a jury I killed Lucius Fox. Luke even cries. He finds out the dude was in there in the store at the time that his dad got murdered, and he woke up with a gun in his hand and he doesn't know what was going on. He was framed, he had blood on him, and he was easily profiled so they put him in jail because the cops are corrupt. That is an okay scene, that was fine. But just as the okay scene happens, it ends with the stupid sniper getting him with the laser. After what could possibly be the best scene in the show, it's interrupted by a damn sniper, it's not even allowed to finish. Then we get more of a... Uh... <sighs> Alice calmly walks into the doctor's office and throws a knife on his desk. He gives her the keys while Kate fucking knocks more people out with the pop music playing in the background. And he lands on top of her skinny frame. This should at least incapacitate her, but she doesn't even get hit. She just gets a knife from Alice and stabs him in the thigh. But they make it to Mouse without getting the lockdown system on or anything. No backup or anything, they just do it. Alice starts whispering to Mouse, but Kate locks the door. She made a promise to get them together and not out of Gotham, so Alice is big mad because she got duped. Jacob comes around the corner and apparently was in on the whole thing, and this was a whole ruse to get Alice inside the asylum. So the guards being beat up and possibly killed, and the guy being framed for the bomb were all the ruse as well? You are no better than me! Sad music plays, Kate cries, and Alice screams. So the show is actually framing it as though we should feel sorry for Alice and that Kate did a bad thing. Okay, so here's my thing. You might think that Kate saying that she wanted to get them out of Gotham was like all a ruse to get Alice in here, but Kate has let Alice go a million times and genuinely wished for her to leave Gotham and just do her own thing. So how is this different? Plus, the show is acting like Kate should have just gotten Alice to move out of Gotham. So I don't see how this is supposed to really makes sense. But then in the after story of the episode, Jacob moved the body of the skin man and says Alice is under top surveillance and they hug with happy music playing. She's gonna escape, isn't she? While Luke comes in to the bootleg hospital to be comforted by Asian. Killer is still out there but the music is happy- happy music! Why happy music? Reggie. They're playing happy music while he's talking about how a killer got away and he's never gonna find out who murdered his dad. Jacob got the sniper on him next, so he actually does what he's supposed to and jumps out of the way instead of just staying still like all the other victims did. The sniper still uses a fucking laser, so Jacob manages to shoot him and then talks to him, and is surprised when the guy is too dead to say anything back. Who hired you? <laughs> so then it cuts to Kate being drunk on the edge of a building. Not to kill herself, but just to be stupid and sit there. Blonde shows up and drinks with her, and Kate says that she feels herself becoming Alice, and that's the only reason that she locked her up. As usual, Kate's reasoning is retarded. Then she kisses Blonde, and they don't fall to their deaths. One more scene before the episode ends. Mouse is smiling, and Alice is going more insane, saying that she wants to be queen. As if Jacob and Kate are the reason for her being even more evil now. Oh boy. Oh! I've been fallen! Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. This episode begins with Kate and Alice playing video games in their house while well, none of them are actually playing because none of them are pressing any of the buttons other than the ones on the top. Kate is making weird sexual comments, especially since that's her sister. Uh, that's right! Come to death. And then the lights suddenly flicker and Alice screams that she wants to stay here. The delusion ends and she wakes up having electroshock therapy in Arkham. Wait, is this the same set for the bootleg hospital? Fantasy is not reality. 
Have you been studying this like I told you? Oh, I have, Ted, I have. In reality, Batwoman is chasing another bad dude up a staircase. She lets him go because he gives her what he stole and he tries to attack her then and she sends him down the stairs and accidentally kills him. She then runs out after having a flashback of another death again, as if we already didn't see that. She takes off her mask even though she's still right besides the building. I guess taking off your mask in public is normal now? Your heart rate's off the charts. No shit for brains! It skips to one week later. The police officer wakes up in his car with a bomb strapped to him. So this is the Saw episode. He needs to make a decision between himself blowing up and the building that is also rigged blowing up instead. He doesn't even wait for the guy to stop talking before he just presses the thing to blow up the bank. Anything for his city, would you? Rachel Maddow just gets mad at him on the radio the next morning. People are pretending to be Batwoman now because she's not doing a fucking job, including this idiot who asks Asian about her whereabouts. Asian phrases it as though she has information on Batwoman, which would make her a target, even though she shouldn't be doing that. I'm the last person Batwoman would ever confide in. Meanwhile, Kate is all depressed and Blonde tells her to get the fuck over it. Kate says that she crossed the line by killing the skin man and she feels it whenever she puts the suit on, but decides to buckle up again after she's informed of the explosion. Mouse and Alice are doing weird therapy and talking about their problems. For some reason, they let Alice and Mouse casually sit next to each other, there's no restraints, and Tommy Elliot comes in late and has a knife in his shoe that apparently no one else can see besides Alice, even though it's just sticking out of his shoe. How did he even get that? Also, he's not insane? He's just a bad dude, right? So why is he suddenly acting as though he is insane? All of the psycho people are just allowed to mix with barely any supervision. What is this, Phantasmagoria 2? What about me? What about me? I'm the- Black Lightning and Blonde are researching the bomber with this fucking red string board. They're trying to figure out the sniper's real name, and they're setting up for some love triangle between them and Kate, but since Blonde has no personality besides Snark, I don't know what she has to offer. Luke is angry, so he's actually doing something physical for once. The Detonator is the name of the person who was doing the bomb stuff, and he was active seven years ago, and the same shit happens back then, but he couldn't be caught, so he's back now. It's the guy in the back talking about copycats, you know who he is already. Luke starts rambling about the suspects and Kate sees the suit and gets another stupid anxiety attack. But Luke then realizes she's not out looking for skin man and she says, If I told you the truth, you would not want me to suit up either. He doesn't even question this. She just admitted she lied and then she just goes off without the suit to do her job. Alice is walking around without shackles and passes Tommy. She stops him and the orderlies don't keep them moving or anything. She just teases him and he stabs her while the staff just stand there. They only tackle him after he stabs Alice and he just left the knife inside her, I guess? She just holds it and they let her hold it as they escort her to the doctor. There are people who have shackles and proper guards in the background. Why is Alice not getting this treatment? Alice goes into the suspect's house under the guise of real estate stuff and he just lets her walk in. She fucking punches him through the newspaper for no reason and she's apparently so strong that she holds him down and asks for info about the bomb. And then she finds out that the guy died like seven years ago. So she is letting his arms free but she is so strong that he doesn't even move. Meanwhile, another dude wakes up in the same situation with another bomb. Alice is fine now, I guess, and she walks up to Mouse and undoes her stitches to reveal that she hid the knife. Uh, how the fuck? They just left the knife inside her when they stitched her up and she doesn't need anyone to fix her up again now that she opened it up herself. The dude in the car says that the target is the bootleg hospital and Jacob, who's on the phone with the victim, says that they need to get everyone out of the building and then the bomb gets close to exploding and they can detonate it safely. Apparently, there are so many injured people that Asian tells everyone to leave so that she can try and work something out herself. I don't know why this guy got to have his phone with him in the car but the other guy didn't, you know, whatever. The dude wants to blow it up because he's afraid of dying but but Jacob tells him not to and they suddenly just cut to it being 9 seconds and set it off so I guess everyone is fine. Kate shows up to help and has another hissy fit because she sees someone else trying to do the Batwoman thing who got injured. Asian walks out and has a word with Kate and does this bullshit speech about hope before saying that she knows Kate is Batwoman. She confesses this in the middle of the corridor so she's lucky no one else heard this. Who hunted down Derek Peters and locked him in a urinal after he ditched me at homecoming. It couldn't be more obvious. Yeah, but not in the way you think. Think. And she says that the city needs Kate now. I hope no one else was listening to these secrets being unfolded. Mouse is being strapped up and at first I thought that the knife would be something involving him getting free and was going to make a comment about them not patting him down before taking him in here, but he just gets free somehow. 
There's no explanation, he just does. He escapes and kills the guys in there, of course, because why check if the patient is carrying anything when you bring them in or, you know, have guards there at all? Jacob is on the phone about getting prints and the bomber trips him down the stairs. I don't know how there's no cameras in there or anything. How are you getting him out of HQ like that? The crows apparently have a lot of security. We then get Kate staring at the suit and Jacob is now in the same situation as the other victims, looking like he wants a smoke and a nap. The bomber tries catching up to her to, on her bike and she gets shot but it's fine, so she uses her hook to make him fly off his bike. Why is she getting flashbacks in the middle of the road? I love how the anxiety and PTSD only pop up when they're needed for the plot. It's zero research on how it actually works, yet the audience for this is the type that would accuse you of being ableist if you said something they didn't like, so I think that's kind of funny. He ends up telling her everything after some extremely suspicious non-answers about who killed Luke's dad, and he reveals that the bomb is under Wayne building. Why is he telling her this? And then she takes him there and he says the bomb can only be disarmed if the other bomb goes off, which is bullshit, because if something went wrong, you'd just end up where the bomb is and you'd just die? I guess you're not that much of a mastermind anyway. Despite the fact that the bomb could go off. Black Lightning and Blonde are just hanging around Jacob. Then Kate says that they should be prepared for the Wayne building to blow up. Luke shows up and says that he wants to shoot his dad's killer and starts screaming. Luke brings magic bullshit lockdown out of nowhere when they could have just used it in the other episodes and then asks why his dad died. Dude says that Tommy paid him because he wanted a powerful book that Luke's dad was writing and he was supposed to rough the dad up, but accidentally shot him in the chest? What kind of accidents do you have? Four years just covering- Oh! I've been fallen! Listen, why is Black Lightning still hanging around chatting while the bomb is there. But Kate starts having PTSD again and says, Killing him, it won't change what happened to your dad. I kill Cartwright. And ends up confessing that she killed Skin Man, to which there is some hilarious awkward silence. The bomb is at one minute, and then she starts talking about how she feels like a fraud and they have a moment, all while the bomb is still ticking, and then they just jump cut it to 10 seconds and run out of the building when the button is pressed and the bomb just stops short of them like there's an invisible wall there. Suddenly, Black Lightning is just being a crow again, and Jacob says that he's draining the swamp or some shit. We are draining the swamp. And then Blonde is there as a new recruit. Kate and Luke are back to being partners, and she says that she didn't want to tell him everything because she thought that he thought of her as some sort of infallible hero, and says that she broke Batman's code. Instead of calling her a fucking egomaniac, Luke confesses that Batman also killed Joker, so Batman broke his own code. Once again, they insult the memory of Batman to bring Kate up to a higher level. There's a stupid funny scene where Luke finds out that Asia knows Kate is Batwoman, and Mouse is wearing the Doctor's suit and disguise, and Alice decides that they're staying in Arkham to rule the place. This is how villains are made. Episode 18 opens with a swooping camera and some dude standing around being menacing while they talk about people in shipping containers they're trafficking. Batwoman slowly flies over the top of them and this guy turns around, even though he's now facing away from where she came from, and he gets dragged away into the goofy darkness. They then do this shaky camera one-shot fight scene and she just fights them all one at a time and lets the boss man limp away for some reason. Of course he comes back and pulls her wig, which we were all saying would happen anyway. Have you been studying this like I told you? What is Asian wearing? The trafficker got away because he grabs her cowl and she doesn't see the hair being a problem, but Luke is on sassy mode today and tells her that this isn't a good idea. Who could have predicted that 30,000 strands of grab me red hair would be like waving a flag in front of a bull? <coughs> She says she's gonna go after him again, and I'm just wondering why the fuck she let him get away in the first place. She wants to focus on the magic bullshit journal from before as well. Black Lightning and Blonde are searching for the journal on a mission, and stop to make fun of some boobies and, and Tommy's dick. Kate asks if there's any progress, and they just give more quirky dialogue. Why are you not wearing gloves? So Kate goes directly to ask Tommy, and he's he's just fully insane now. They do the weird flirting talking thing and she teases him about not being Batman's friend. He doesn't bang the glass, but it makes a sound anyway. I miss my mommy! Can I talk to her? She says that she already knows information, yet is here asking him for information, so I, I don't know why he doesn't see this as bullshit. And she just leaves while he screams something that I don't understand. The bells are... 
He goes back to his cell, cuffed like Alice was not, and she just is there with a the mouse. They try forming an alliance as well with Tommy, and I assume the guards are in the hallway so I still don't know how this is working out, but Alice wonders what the book thing is about, and has to be told that Bruce is Batman as if she wouldn't have figured it out before. There's even a little audible sting as if it's some big reveal. Because Bruce Wayne's Batman. The doctor then checks the hallway and takes off his fucking mask by the door, and in the next shot his clothes suddenly don't fit. Kate and Luke then listen to the exposition call, and the dude opens the safe to show the journal. Kate then does the most horrifying thing yet. Wait, you feel that? Nope. Asian is surprised that she can use medical words as verbs, even though she's supposed to be a med student. Blonde walks in and Asian feels left out because she's not one of the team, even though she can't really do anything. But then Blonde goes to investigate with Kate. Luke is not acting anymore, he's back to be just being a desk jockey and the entire show is poorer for it. Kate runs into that one person that she dated for like 5 minutes at the beginning of the series and they imply that they want to get back together and then the power goes out. That woman goes, goes around in black and white night vision somehow and it's clearly still light in the building but Blonde is able to see and fights fine but I guess everyone else is just blind? Kate finds the journal just sitting there and takes it and then gets flung into the wall which I guess was a trap entirely dependent on the position she was standing when she took the thing. So if she went in from the other side she would have not gotten hit? Tommy has his face taken off and put on someone else who is hanged and they just show him with no face being fine with it. He's just not in pain or anything. Kate is the person who could get hit by a truck and be fine. She's knocked out as a fucking bookcase falls on her. These guys casually have a conversation over her body before they take her to the trafficking market ring thing. They don't even take the mask off, they just have her there and be fine with it. You don't even care about who she is. You have a bunch of different things in the suit as well, like tracking the suit, all of these shots like adrenaline shots and everything, but somehow you don't know where she is. And Asian just happens to fix up the sister of the bad guy, so they're gonna suit up Asian and send her in. I know Sabatino's cousin. I pumped her stomach when she OD'd. She owes me one. Then Tommy gets portrayed by the guy fucking playing with all the bat gadgets and he has a fit. <laughs> They're also bringing up the magpie bitch to help him out, so she's coming back. They're selling off Kate's stuff and haven't taken the fucking suit off yet, so Asian just walks in to make an offer. Meanwhile, Blonde is getting punched hard enough to fracture something, but she's fine because she's a woman. Jacob is calling Alice about Tommy, and he is suspicious, but but he's also fucking stupid because they know it's not Tommy who really died because they could do the autopsy and take the mask off and realize it's not him. But I guess that's just not how it works. Alice goes on about her usual pity dialogue again, and then she threatens him, and there should be people watching, like the staff, but they just don't do anything. Meanwhile, Asian is trying to look intimidating to the traffickers, but she won't even swear, so I don't know how she's pulling this off. Whether she blew up a ship in an H or bat ranger dog, I don't give a feel. What's going on, big guy? Magpie finds another fucking window, I wonder what she would do if there wasn't one conveniently wherever she went. And Kate gets sold to the boss, she let go in the first part. But Asian causes a distraction and gets the bullshit gadget to cut Kate free. Batwoman hits the air around people and knocks them out, and Blonde fucking kills everyone keeping her captive. <laughs> They meet up and get out of there, and then Batwoman meets Magpie on the same rooftop as before. She flings the journal away as they fight and Kate goes to get it, and comes back. Asian and Kate get along again, it's uh, it's beautiful and I totally care about it. The girlfriend lady meets up with her and they have sex, and the sex goes on for way too fucking long. She kissed Blonde, she loves Black Lightning, and she's whoring with this bitch as well. Just ev everyone, every single hole is a goal. Asian then finds the Batcave and they show it off again, and Asian tries to take a selfie like a fucking idiot, and she also finds out that Bruce is Batman, which she would have guessed before because they're in Wayne Building. Kate wakes up and finds the girlfriend missing and the journal missing, so I guess she was evil all along. This is what you get for taking major plot point devices over to fuck. Luke gets mad at her, rightfully so, but Blonde makes him stop 
because no one can be met at the grid gate. Then it's revealed that the girlfriend is Magpie's sister all along and she goes off on her stealing from the rich part again even though she looks kind of rich and she doesn't really understand that the dad's diary is more of a sentimental thing and not a rich people thing. Then it alludes to Blonde liking Black Lightning and, and Blonde has a secret phone call about her hiding something. Mouse finds out that Luke's dad wrote the entire journal in code and gets all angry as if this is a surprise but, you know, cliffhanger and stuff. What's going on, big guy? Episode 19. We're one episode away from the finale. Have you been handling this so far? I think you need to take a drink. Episode 19 opens with Tommy shooting people in the fucking library, and somehow getting to the top to get to this academic guy without being stopped. He even says Gosh. to dig it in, and boy does it dig in. Kate then drives to the girlfriend's place and yells at her while she holds a bottle of pepper spray as if that's going to help. Kate has plot powers. Then she reveals that Magpie is her sister, which we would have found out when she was first caught I'd imagine, but you know, whatever. And Blonde has already come by to question her. Dr. Man is showing us that there are somehow still employees in the hospital that don't know what's going on and they need to keep their cover while they somehow got this guy out of the library and are torturing him until he solves the diary mystery? What happened to all those people that you shot? I don't know how they think he's gonna be able to do the work that they want him to while he's being electrocuted, but whatever. Tommy also flaps the journal even though it's valuable and they need it, and then they kill the dude because he couldn't do it. Of course he couldn't do it, what kind of plan is this? So they want to take Luke because they think that he knows how to break the code even though breaking codes isn't something that you can just do because you're related to someone. I guess they just assume that he knows because he it's his dad and everything. And Mouse is concerned about Kate coming after them, but it's not like she does anything. Kate then gets mad at Blonde because Blonde held a knife to the girlfriend's throat, and the crows pretend to do things, looking for the guy who got kidnapped by Hush, and they reveal his name again. Witnesses heard him utter, Hush. Given him a nickname, Hush. Luke is angry at Kate because he trusts Blonde and she doesn't like him disagreeing with her. She tells him to leave after he points out all the fucking idiotic shit she did recently instead of trying to see it from his perspective. She and Asian get a security alert that someone else got kidnapped and apparently Alice is just getting a bunch of code breakers and somehow getting away with this. She is not getting in any information out of them and somehow doesn't figure out that electrocuting them isn't the best way to go. So Kate thinks that Hush has the journal. This current kidnapped guy is brought to the same place because they don't understand how this is going to work. Tommy holds up the journal and doesn't even let the guy touch the journal to do his work, and he doesn't see how this isn't going to work. Mouse and him start infighting as well. Mouse blames him for everyone being on alert about code breakers going missing, when it's all of them who are stupid here, not just him. Then the fucking gay hacker from before is on a call with her girlfriend and Tommy just casually strolls up to the school in the middle of the day to kidnap her out in the open. As if she's going to do what the professionals can't just because she's a gay woman. But Kate gets a call from the girlfriend about it so it cuts to gay hacker snarking in the back seat because she's so brave and amazing in the face of danger. Stunning and brave. Batwoman is on time as usual and must have teleported there to, to chase them. I don't know how she does it but she does it. Asian is on the line this time because Luke isn't there to help. Asian is somehow figuring this out but she tells Kate that she's going the wrong way when the van is right there and Kate stops it with her magic hook. You're going the wrong way! Tommy immediately starts shooting. She gets gay hacker after defeating the air around Tommy, and he just steals the car and leaves while they stare at him and don't even do anything. Tommy is like, Batwoman showed. What do you mean? Batwoman showed. Well, what I fucking said. Alice asks if they want to do things her way this time, which I thought that's what they were doing the whole time. Luke just strolls into Crow headquarters and asks Blonde what she's really up to just in the middle of everything, and Kate brings Gay Hacker to the Batcave. Why? Because fuck you. Luke gets a call from Alice pretending to be Kate from a different phone, and Luke doesn't even question any of this. Jacob says that they found Batarangs where the fight happened, meaning that Kate just leaves her equipment behind. She just drops it everywhere and leaves. Then Luke gets kidnapped by Tommy and Blonde also gets caught up in this, just in open space once again. I, d I don't know what's happening or why no one else notices this. This time they're gonna fry Blonde if Luke doesn't work. Meanwhile, Asian is upset that Kate keeps bringing other people into the cave and not her. Black Lightning just strolls up to Kate's desk to chat and they talk about awkward stuff while Asian and the gay hacker watch on and compare it to torture. 
While in the meantime, Blondie is getting electrocuted. Luke says that he needs to think and can't with her being tortured, so Hush just leaves them alone in the damn room so they can talk. Luke apparently started actually figuring out what the coding is. Instead of thinking of a plan to escape, they just work on the cipher. Blonde doesn't even have the thing on her head properly. <laughs> then they figure out it's to do with his social security number because it's something personal to him. Gay Hacker is a cunt. Asian is going through Luke's things and finds a magic pair of glasses. What's going on, big guy? They pull it over the journal they have to figure out it translates everything, which looks an awful lot like the font of wiki entries. Oh wait, it is actually those. The show just plagiarized Wikipedia for this book. You can even see the citations. Then Alice comes in and Blonde is like, We're not telling you. Which implies that she does know something, so she just let Alice know that she knows something. But that woman comes in and starts beating people up, so it's okay. She has some weird magic thing that does something. I don't know what it does, but the crows somehow hear that she's in Gotham, so they're, they're doing something. They're still shocking Blonde, and she's being snarky about it despite being in pain. And Luke is arguing with Alice. When Batwoman comes bursting in and Alice is like, haha, get fucked. Batwoman has the dad's glasses with her to bargain for Luke. These must be fake glasses, right? You, you wouldn't actually walk in with the real ones, right? Luke admits that they have weapons designed to kill her in the journal, but we already have those, so why is it special? Alice is actually given the real glasses. She tests it out after some awkward staring and she finds out that they actually work. And then Alice just lets them go after this. But the guards finally show up and do their job. And now Alice and Tommy have broken their cover in Arkham, so they have to leave. I don't know how they managed to keep their cover for so long, but oh well. Why can you unlock the cells in this room? Everyone walks out and goes fucking nuts. Batwoman just goes through them all and they don't even bother fighting back and Alice just sets everything on fire while Mouse panics and she burns his mask even though they could have used it. It's like watching a fire break out in The Sims. Then the crows fucking show up. It just cuts to everyone back home as well. They, they, what? They talk about stuff and Luke is saying that he'd rather die than have thousands of people die from Alice. And he's also wondering why the gay hacker is here and everything is just fine. Blonde is fine too, even though she should have at least something wrong with her. Black Lightning kisses her while Kate walks in on them and it's awkward. But Kate loudly talks about Blonde hiding something and it's revealed that what she was hiding was actually protecting them all so she's a good guy after all. Kate shows up to see Jacob by the signal and he compares Alice to the Joker and says that Batwoman needs to get out of the city. Mouse and Alice are in the sewers now and Alice is getting scolded by Mouse and now she wants to kill Kate out of nowhere? I thought that she didn't want to kill her, but she wants Mouse to make Tommy get... Kry kryptonite? A little green rock called Kryptonite. Did you get your superheroes mixed up? What? If this is episode 19, I have no idea. How are they going to end this? Prepare yourselves. <laughs> Here it is. The last episode. Ever since the first shitty part of the show that I reacted to, so many new people have come out to join me in this adventure. So many new people have come to Wish for Death Island. And this great saga will now come to an end. Okay, before we actually get to the episode, I'd like to examine something. So I've never really looked at the titles of these episodes in the videos. And today, since this is a special video, I'm going to read all of the episode titles. Enjoy. Pilot. The Rabbit Hole. Down, down, down. Who are you? Mine is a long and sad tale. I'll be judge, I'll be jury. Tell me the truth. A mad tea party. Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2. How queer everything is today. An unbirthday present. Take your choice. Drink me. Grinning from ear to ear. Off with her head. Through the looking glass. A narrow escape. If you believe in me, I'll believe in you. A secret kept from the rest. Oh, mouse. My favorite is unbirthday. It reminds me of when YouTube tried to do the unthanksgiving thing on Twitter and how queer is everything today considering the whole series? I don't know. Anyway, let's get into the episode. It opens with a reminder that Kate had been given the rock of kryptonite from Supergirl or whatever from Crisis on Infinite Things. I didn't think it would actually come back, but here we are because the show is just chaos spaghetti. This dude with a machete is, is just running around on the train. He kills this old dude while the old dude just sits there. Jacob then shows up and the dude stabs the electrical box while Jacob is just standing there doing nothing and they kind of fight. Kate is also somehow there as well without the suit. They don't even pursue him, they just let him stand there. 
Rachel Maddow gets mad that the crows couldn't stop the big bad dude, and Alice is reading stuff while Mouse is big mad as well. The crows have an app now as well, something that he really doesn't like, which sounds more of a hassle than 911, but okay. Tommy then comes in and starts flapping his arms because he wants a good face, and there's more infighting. Luke is holding up the green rock because it's the only one on Earth, and he's when he destroys it, all ways of killing Batwoman are gone forever. I guess shooting her exposed flesh doesn't work. Besides, Alice knows who you are, so why can't she just come in to kill you when you don't have the suit on. But Asian comes in to talk about the football dude killing people on the train and how he was taking steroids but Kate doesn't understand sports because she's a lesbian. That's not me saying that, that's the show saying that. Let's not assume I know what any of those words mean because I'm a lesbian. Kate is gonna suit up and talk to the killer's brother but Asian is concerned about Jacob wanting to fight Batwoman. Kate argues that no one knows Jacob like she does even though she's been absent for years and Asian would have known him more. She's got nepotism so it's okay. Meanwhile, Alice is in this amazing disguise to get stuff from the university to make Tommy's face. She walks into the professor's room and describes what she's looking for as a green rock that cuts things. I guess you gotta rewrite the lore somehow? But he says Luke's dad had it so Alice gets all pissy and acts like she never just walks into Wayne building and it's an impossible concept, even though she has many times. And then she hits him and he doesn't even move, so she just walks out. Asian and Luke are working on the rock, and they can't really figure it out. They could just hide it somewhere, like in the middle of the ocean or something, but you know, whatever. Someone is running around the stadium with shitty music. Batwoman shows up to talk about the killer, who is the brother, as you'll recall. The dude says that the game made his brother obsessed, and it's all the game's fault. And then the killer comes in and yells, it's beautiful. Betray me! BETRAYAL! Batwoman runs up to him before pulling out the fucking ranged weapon, which you don't need to run up to someone for, and then fails and does nothing as he cripples his brother, and then she just stands there like, oh fuck. Oh, fuck. Then the news shows up. Jacob says it's all Batwoman's fault that this is happening, which I kind of agree. Kate is watching it from the cave, looking upset. They find out that the old guy on the train did the brain diddling to make the killer insane. Alice is making Tommy a face, and Mouse is wondering when they'll kill him because he wants her to stop fucking everything up so they can just leave. Then she says that she's willing to die to make her plan happen, and he says he's leaving. He says that she never visited him in Arkham, and he can survive without her anyway. She decides that she's gonna get even more quirky. Asian goes over the brain scan of the killer, and they act like he's impossible to take down, but they also don't remember him fucking screaming when the machete hit him, and they act like that was enough to take a man his size down anyway when it wasn't. They put the signal on so the crows show up, and then Asian walks out saying that she has a message from Batwoman and Jacob gets angry. She pulls the phone out of her pocket and the call was going on the entire time, I guess, but she tells Jacob that they need to work together to catch the killer. He says that she's a fucking bitch because she used Asian instead of coming out herself and throws the phone against the wall. Asian has a massive speech and Jacob says that she won't even show up. Then she does show up and I, I, I don't know why the phone call was a thing. He just takes her hand and decides to work with her. Then Alice is going through some trauma exercise for some reason. He finds out that he's poisoned and she cries and says that she couldn't live without him or something and she just cradles him as he dies. I can't make myself care but it's also bullshit. She says that he never experienced true betrayal. BETRAYAL! They go to the CGI stadium and Batwoman is standing all the way up there when they're watching the field and they're all being so obvious for some reason. Blonde is concerned because of Jacob but Kate says it's okay because I looked into my dad's eyes as if that's gonna help. Then the power goes out so fuck. The killer just teleports to Jacob and takes him out and then teleports to everyone else and runs screaming. This is amazing. <laughs> The guy that they're using as bait just stands there and doesn't run, and then Batwoman appears and they fight. She tries reasoning with him and he just screams some more, it's so funny. Tim, this isn't you! <laughs> but her reasoning means that he's gonna be okay now. But then he got shot anyway, even though reasoning isn't gonna stop brain damage, it just happens anyway, but she gets pissed off because they shoot him. After they shoot him, they form a magic circle around her to get her too. Jacob says that this is war now, so the entire thing was a dupe. She says that they're on the same team, but they start shooting her anyway, and she covers herself with her cape and flies into space. Jacob is just wondering why everyone is liking Batwoman, and they all say hope like it's a Danganronpa game, but he's refusing to get this faulty logic. Black Lightning is going on about how she's scared of relationship stuff out of the blue, and Blonde shows that someone was taking pictures of them. Kate says that her betrayal hurts, and they're acting like Jacob is a bad person and everyone is just 
talking. Luke then reveals that he destroyed the green shit and made it pouted. Asian just blows it away even though Luke could have used it, but they all get nostalgic and Kate promises no more secrets. They also find out that Kate has another rock and she doesn't want to destroy it because Supergirl gave it to her. Jacob is also sad, but he gets some bullets from the stadium and he's finding out a way to kill Batwoman. Godspeed. Alice is making her face for Tommy and rambling. You won't guess who it is. You make me Bruce Wayne. Yep, it's Bruce. That's the reveal of the ending. That's the entire thing. I thought that this would have something to do with how Ruby Rose is leaving the season so they would make Kate disappear or something, but that just doesn't happen. This is just a normal episode. This isn't even a finale. What's this bullshit insane bullshit anyway? <laughs> what? But anyway, you know what? We did it. We're free. We did it. There's no more of the- Oh, fuck.